what you need to know to succeed in a chief of staff or high level operations role. Hello, internet. So normally this would be a Thursday tactic for our My Ascent Network members, but dovetailing off of our leadership series episode two and wanting to give you a little glimpse at my personal playbook, my managerial and leadership philosophies in action. So my time as chief of staff in the Missouri State Auditor's Office. So what does that role look like? Chief of staff, COO, high level executive assistant, basically anyone that is working with the CEO, the president, the principal of an organization and is in charge of a role for delivering results. Chief of staff, operations, COO, this type of role. So marshalling resources to deliver those results. In my opinion, that's probably the primary function of a COO or ops manager. It sounds easy, yeah, but how do we do this? So number one, prioritization. You know, luckily for me, when I stepped into my role as chief of staff in the auditor's office, I had zero background in accounting, which was great because there was no way, no temptation for me to drop into that arena and screw things up. You know, impose my theories on people that had been doing this their whole career. So the only thing that I could do in that arena was learn, which is great. You know, man, did I ever learn? So reading the audits before getting into the office and then when we got into the office, teaching me a ton about the best practices, management, strategy. So while I was doing my job, I was getting better at my job. But first and foremost, it's the principle that sets the priorities for the organization. You know, the chief of staff is there to make sure it gets done. When we arrived in the office, some of those priorities were set for us. You know, there are statutory audits that are required on a set schedule. So, great. How do we meet those requirements on a limited budget with limited resources? And how do we still pursue our other objectives that we want to pursue? Pretty much my job to figure that out marshal resources, figure out how we deliver the results. So in my role, I had to know about the normal function of the office, the audits we were doing, where they stood, how we were doing on track for our year, things like that. Audits getting behind, what's happening, working with the audit teams, just what's going on, that's it. How are we doing? Are we hitting our deadlines? Are we hitting our benchmarks? If not, why? Who, who do we need to get involved to get back on track? Marshalling resources to deliver on those objectives. So what needs a heavy touch? What needs a light touch? In my role, not only did I have audits to deal with, but we had legal matters. We had legislative matters. We had media and communications. We had human resources. You cannot do all of these things. So you have to determine what needs a light touch, what needs a heavy touch. And for me, one of the easiest ways to do that walk and talk. I spent a lot of time just walking around the office, talking with everybody, the front desk receptionist, supplies guy, the auditors, the senior staff, everybody, the IT staff. What's going on? How's your job going? How can I make your life a little easier? That's my role. You know, we know what the objectives are. Once we've got that out of the way, deliver. Make it easy for people. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to go to the school of hard knocks on every occasion. It's a bad philosophy. That's crummy leadership. Don't do that. So when you get involved, you really have to roll up your sleeves and get in. It's really in one of three scenarios. Number one, it hit the fan and you gotta jump in. Two, it's about to hit the fan and you gotta jump in. Or number three, the task is just of the utmost importance that your involvement is needed to make sure that the right outcome is reached. But you don't wanna get into the temptation of getting into every task. You can't micromanage as a chief of staff. You'll miss something and it'll knock you on your backside. So as we got into our year, we kept learning, we realized, oh boy, we have a really top heavy organization. A wave of retirements would be just catastrophic. We would lose so much institutional knowledge. We would lose so much talent. And 
none of that talent would be there to help groom the next generation. So, again, competing priorities, limited budget, but we gotta get this done. We have to bring in some new talent. So my team, they got creative and we figured out a way to you know, carve out some new roles and attract and retain and develop new talent so that we can continue to fill our mission. So COO, chief of staff, it's this constant balancing act. It's managing this tension of light touch, heavy touch. How much time do I give here? How much time do I give there? There is no book you can read. There is no course you can take. You have to just get in the arena and start doing it. So what are the skills that you need to be successful in this role? In addition to the stuff that I've talked about, just the analogies from my own experience. Number one, God, know the priorities, know the goals. I, I preach this so much because I have been in organizations and been on teams where priorities are not clearly set. Goals are vague or non-existent. And not surprisingly, in those cases, results are suboptimal, teams don't function well, organizations have crummy cultures. Why? Because nobody knows what they're trying to accomplish. Every man for themselves is not a team. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> so, number two, rock solid communication. You are, the, you are the hub. You're the conduit between the principal and the staff. Information flowing in both directions largely goes through you. So it's up to you to make sure that you are crystal clear on what's going on and that when you communicate it, the understanding on the other end is crystal clear. Do not assume, make sure, double check, triple check if you have to, but make sure, are we clear on the goal? Are we clear on how we're gonna get there? Now, if the communication isn't bad, well, here's what happens. Deadlines start getting blown, bad. Tasks get done incorrectly and have to re be redone, bad. Inefficient, this is not what we want. So how did we avoid bad communication? How did we try to curtail that? Two ways weekly senior staff meetings, up to me to update the agenda and have a working knowledge of everything that was going on. And then when we got into the meeting, we go into more detail, try to find some perspective that we might need, discuss among senior staff, smart group of people. We're not all auditors, but we don't need to be. There might be a different way of doing things. There might be something we didn't spot. So senior staff meetings were a great way to make sure that communication was flowing, make sure we were all on the same page. And then we do a monthly all hands meeting, the full staff, the entire office, over a hundred people. And we do that once a month so that we could talk, just talk directly with the staff, give them an opportunity to air questions, air grievances, you know, make suggestions, make sure that we're all on the same page. They understand what the priorities are, where we're taking the office and why. And then number three, organizational and time management skills. You cannot lead without those two basic fundamentals. You just can't. If you can't manage your own time, if you can't get organized, how are you gonna communicate well? How are you gonna prioritize your goals and objectives? So number four, courage. You know, leadership is not for the faint of heart. You're gonna to have to have tough conversations with people. You know, I have had to fire people. It sucks. But this is the role. So those are our four takeaways. If you're in a chief of staff, an operations role, you know, you get those four things down, hopefully you'll be in good shape. If I can help you out any further, you've got specific questions about your role, specific questions about any of this advice, reach out, check us out, ascentmethod.com, and we'll see you later.